And I found this nug of weed in the couch that was just like solidified. And it wasn't like like tucked into the couch. It was just kind of like on top of it, but in the corner. So it was still like completely exposed to air and everything. And that shit was like, it was like a, a stale chip. Like the, uh. like the the nug of weed was like completely stale. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, bro. I took that shit, grinded it up and smoked it and it got fucking hot. <laughs> this is modern day hippie. We are your homies who've done nearly every drug under the sun. Over 600 psychedelic trips and nearly every kind of bender you can possibly imagine have armed us with a universe of knowledge. I'm Yuki, and with my co-host Reggie, we talk about how we do drugs in a responsible, safe, and fun way to improve our lives. Before we dive in, and so we don't get sued, a quick legal disclaimer. This podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. Our goal is to educate and inform others about the realities of substance use in an engaging and entertaining format. We share these experiences so you can learn from them without trying them yourself. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to attempt to recreate anything found in this episode or in any of our other content. We are not confessing to any acts stated in this podcast. The content in this episode should not be treated as factual or real in any way. With that, we welcome you through our portal and hope you enjoy the show. What's up, hippies? Hope you're having an absolutely vibey day so far. We've got Reggie here for you today, done some in-depth research, and today we're answering a question that we posed a couple episodes ago which is, do drugs expire? Now, this is something that UK and I have wondered for a while. <laughs> and I'll tell you that we have some, we had some theories and it was really interesting kind of diving into this a little bit, uh, researching it on the internet and seeing how long the shelf life is of your favorite drugs like shrooms, ketamine, acid, etc. cetera. Uh, but before I dive into the research, I'm just curious, Yuki, what, how long do you think shrooms last shrooms Ooh, okay are, are we talking like like like, uh, like, like dried shrooms like, like raw dried, dried shrooms. shrooms yeah not like fresh obviously the fresh ones like they don't last very long at all yeah I, I i'd go maybe like a year like it is like a natural compound like it's here deteriorating pretty quickly but if you keep it away from moisture if like moisture is what can cause the growth of a lot of just like bacteria and, and bad shit that you don't want to eat. Um, then I could see them lasting like maybe a year, year and a half. That's just my guess though. Damn, dude. <laughs> You're pretty on point low key. <laughs> oh, hell uh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Uh, yeah. So you kind of hit the mark with uh, the moisture thing. The biggest thing you gotta worry about with shrooms is mold. So like if your shrooms get moldy, like obviously you, don't, you can't eat them. Like you don't want to be eating that. It's poisonous. I think. <laughs> But uh, yeah. yeah, so apparently if they're stored in a cool, dark place and they're properly dried, then they can last up to 12 months, so a year, but they lose their potency over time, which I feel like we've all experienced that oh. without realizing it. Like, I know like we all have plugs that have like buy shrooms in bulk and it takes might take them a while to sell it or like we just might buy a supply and then like take it over time. And like, if you're like, oh, I feel like it's not hitting like it used to, like, dude, it probably legitimately isn't hitting like it used to <laughs> because it literally loses potency. And I'm really glad that we're like doing this research now because I just picked up some fresh shrooms that my homie just grew and dried. And oh, nice. I was definitely storing them wrong. Like I wasn't put keeping them. I kept them airtight like you're supposed to, but I wasn't keeping them in a, in a away from light. And that's also another important factor. But yeah. One thing that I came across in my research is that a little life hack. If you want your shrooms to last longer than that, for whatever reason, I don't know why you'd want to keep shrooms around for that long without taking them, but maybe you just bought like a giant supply or something. They can last for about four years or more if you freeze them without losing oh, their potency. Damn, that's super interesting. So yeah, I, I guess if you dehydrate them and you freeze them, then... You know, presumably there's no moisture in there, so they're not getting like weird and icy. They're just getting super cold, and yeah, I mean that that, that makes sense, right? Because it's like chemically speaking, I assume the compounds just kind of break down over time, like actual psilocybin, right? And so if you're freezing it, then it actually slows down that process. And I, I mean, honestly, th th this gets at like the reason why I I've had this question, which is like I don't mind buying drugs in bulk. Like, luckily, I can afford to do that, but it's like. How much does it actually make sense to buy it in one go? Exactly. Like, you know, in this case, I don't want them to expire. And dude, I, I've seen dudes walking around with like gallon Ziploc bags of mushrooms. Like 
you better be like selling those or giving those out quickly because otherwise that's just going to expire. And honestly, this is a good reminder for me to check back in with our guest from a couple episodes ago, Mushies, who grows a ton of his own mushrooms, has his own kind of operation around that. And to ask him how he's making sure that his mushrooms are staying as close to 100% potency as possible and that he's not losing too many of them to, uh, you know, to mold and into things just going bad. Because it's like once you get to a certain size operation, if, if you're not able to move all that product in one go, like you've got to keep it good, obviously. And I, 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 if I had to guess, I would guess that mushrooms probably have the shortest shelf life a lot of these drugs versus something that's a little bit more like synthetic or, you know, like a powdered thing, like a ketamine or a Coke. Um, so those are less like natural compounds. At least that's my guess. Again. Hey man, kind of you're on right. something, but there's a caveat to that, which we'll get to later. But, and it's, it was, I found it really interesting, but we'll get to that before we move on from mushrooms though. Uh, obviously like we do a lot of like mushroom chocolates and stuff. I think those depend on how the mushrooms were manufactured. So if they were like, they took raw mushrooms, then like baked them into a chocolate bar, that's obviously going to have a different shelf life than something like a mushroom concentrate. As far as like how long those actually last, I think it varies by manufacturer. And like, I didn't really find too much, like anything as conclusive as I found on like raw mushrooms, obviously, because they're more widespread but um the 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 key takeaway though is that the mushroom chocolates will also lose potency over time so it's another thing to keep in mind when you're buying in bulk like how how much bulk do you really need to buy right gotcha i see Um, i see but i will say right so the like i i I buy them in decent bulk but i also keep them in the fridge which mm, obviously not the same as freezing but i I imagine that helps uh extend if if freezing gives you like four four plus years like i'm sure that by by regular logic like (laughs) refrigerating will definitely make them last longer and honestly i'm glad you said that because i've got a few chocolate bars that i need to go put in the fridge after this (laughs) oh yeah yeah definitely keep those bad boys in the fridge like they i I mean we've had ones that i i think have been in the fridge for like close to a year and when when we take them like i i don't notice any significant drop in the potency yeah honestly i i had a a bar that I just kind of put in a shoebox for a while. And after mm. about a year, I took a few squares and I was like, man, I like, I feel something, but like, I don't feel too much. Like, and I just thought my tolerance was like really high, but no, I'm pretty sure at this point that those shrooms mm. just lost their potency, you know, but yeah, now, no, now that's, I know. that's a good point. Hey hippies. We hope you're enjoying the show so far. If you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple podcasts and are having a good time, you need to come over to YouTube and subscribe to the Modern Day Hippie YouTube channel. We publish exclusive video content, and I promise you the experience is richer and more interesting. So if you're getting any value at all, stop what you're doing, open up the YouTube app, and subscribe at Modern Day Hippie. If you're watching this on YouTube and aren't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Go press subscribe. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the show. All right, just because you brought it up, let's let's switch to some powdered drugs because I thought this was super interesting. So let's start with cocaine. So cocaine itself doesn't actually go bad, apparently, uh, unless like it's exposed to air. But if you keep it in its like container in its package, or even if you just put it in your pocket and like leave it in your pocket for like a really long time, it won't actually go bad. However, this is the big however. As you all know, and we've talked about this on the channel before, cocaine in the U.S. and in most places is not really pure cocaine. It's like always cut with something. Yeah. And your cocaine will expire almost completely dependent on what it is cut with. So like, there's no way for me to tell you how long it's going to last because I don't know how your cocaine is individually cut unless you test it and everything or know who's cutting it and shit. Uh, you really don't know. So that's kind of... And same with other powdered drugs, like 2C and stuff like that. Like, you don't really know. It depends on how they made it, how they cut it, uh, which I just thought was super, super interesting. Dude, um, yeah. So it, 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 do you think it's like a matter of the actual, let's say the, like the, the cocaine compound reacting with whatever it's been cut with um, as they kind of like mix over time, you think? <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Because it, it says in, in what I read that, depending on what's added to it that could that will make it go bad quickly 
like and quickly it's like for something that doesn't go bad like it's pretty it's you know typically pretty quick and so you can kind of tell apparently like a lot of times you can tell that it's going bad because of the way it smells or tastes and if it doesn't taste right or smell right like it probably has like something kind of went rancid dude Um, the sniff test the sniff test never fails bro whether you know it's food it's milk it's eggs or your fucking drugs yeah and so while it while coke itself won't like go bad it, it also like some of its effects apparently after like about a year they will start to decline so and that also depends on how you store it once again so is that also a matter of like i see i see is that also a matter of like a a a dark like dry place essentially because i imagine also moisture isn't great for powders Um, obviously we know for a fact that's yeah they're definitely not right (laughs) (laughs) yeah what i found with a lot of these drugs is obviously moisture is super important especially for like organic things that can like grow mold uh, like shrooms and weed and stuff but light is also really important. I didn't realize how mm-hmm. big of a difference like exposure to light makes, which honestly, if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because UV rays and shit are pretty damaging. Yeah. And honestly, I, I, I like bacteria also need a lot of light to grow. Like, for example, dude, it, it, it's crazy. But so obviously in the US, like milk is refrigerated, but outside of the US, and I'm thinking mainly of Europe, like nobody refrigerates their milk. Like milk just lives like on oh, yeah. a straight up shelf in the store when you buy it and then at home as well, just like in your pantry. And part of the reason why why like that works and, and it's like, you know, just as like safe and healthy is because all the milk containers, they're completely opaque. So it's not like in the US where you have a milk carton and there's like some degree of light that gets through that. It's completely opaque, like plastic or something. And so like j- just taking away that bit of light. Uh, makes the growth of bacteria just way slower and, and way harder for it to happen. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And the factors, just like for a quick list of factors the, to worry about with all drugs, like all drugs will be affected by these factors. So like this is universal. Heat, light, moisture, and air. Those four things will always affect all your drugs. So if you're going to store your drugs and you want them to last a long time, be wary of heat. You want like some climate-controlled environment be wary of light, keep them in a dark place like a drawer or something. Moisture, obviously. And then uh, exposure to air, like chemical reactions happen in the air. But yeah, man, the milk thing, it, it makes sense. Like, you know, <laughs> like we don't really think about these things a lot, I feel like, in the day to day. Yeah. So, I mean, like day to day, it kind of doesn't make a difference because there's just like only so much deterioration or breakdown that can happen in a 24 hour period. But you know, you add up that 1% compounding over the course of 12 months and like, yeah, your, your, your shit might have a decent chance of going bad. You gotta, you gotta watch out for it. But honestly, without even knowing it, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty proud of myself for <laughs> without even trying to taking good care of my substances, you know, they're, they're tucked oh, yeah. away in little baggies in a box in the back of a cupboard. Usually like, you know, they're, they're vibing. They'll, they'll last a good bit. They're vibing. They're vibing. <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> You're at the club and the music is thumping, but you, you've got nothing left in the tank. So what do you do? Sniff some cacao. Yep, you heard that right. Sniff some cacao. It's the hottest new trend in the club and party scene. One bump-sized sniff of raw chocolate powder contains the caffeine equivalent to a half cup of coffee and boom, it hits instantly. And the best part is you can now sniff cacao anytime, anywhere, right out in the open, in front of the DJ booth or the stage, even at the VIP table with your friends. Now, how does that happen without drawing unwanted attention? Well, Snowgo's spring-loaded bump straws make it possible. These classy, triple mirror polished bump straws are the safest, most discreet way to enjoy sniffing cacao. In fact, You've most likely already seen people wearing Snowgo's bump straws as pendants around their necks without even knowing it. Discover why sniffing cacao using Snowgo bump straws is being called the biggest revolution in partying since the invention of rock and roll. Jump on over to snowgostraws.com to learn more. That's S N O G O S T R A W S.com and use discount code MDH25 for 25% off your entire order. And the other factor this makes me think of is, you know, let's say it's like a 12 month average time span for like a substance, let's say like to to be safe, but it's like, you don't know how many months that thing has existed before it got into your hands. You know, that's the biggest thing, dude, especially with no way of knowing. 
Yeah, it's not like this stuff's FDA approved and it has like a <laughs> manufactured date on it. You know? <laughs> Some <laughs> of it is, I guess, like ketamine could be, you know. But speaking of ketamine. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm really curious ketamine's about susceptible. this one. Dude, yeah. So ketamine, as you would expect, is susceptible to the same things as like Coke. Uh, <clears throat> the things we just mentioned, like the heat, the light, the air, etc. However, one thing I thought was interesting about ketamine is that while refrigerating it that does help like to maintain a stable temperature unlike shrooms you can't freeze ketamine apparently freezing ketamine oh. causes irrever irreversible damage and makes it ineffective so like your ketamine just won't even work so wow. i don't know how that works i don't know if it's like i'm imagining I mean, that, like when you freeze yeah i, I mean that sounds like a straight up like chemical change that it's causing yeah it probably like, is and, like i know things freeze differently like water is like unique and that it expands when frozen and it's like it makes me think of like okay like if i put a water bottle in the freezer it'll explode right like yeah probably something similar to this but the opposite <laughs> it's obviously not expanding yeah no dude actually but, yeah you, mentioned that, you want to keep it air yeah yeah no, dude, you, you mentioning that uh reminds me of how like a lot of my friends who do a decent amount of coke they they do this like trick where they put their coke on a plate and then they microwave it um, oh really have you ever seen that, that or done that no I've heard of no, that. Dude. I haven't seen someone actually do it though. Yeah. No, dude. I, I, it's funny. I've run into multiple friends who are like, this is like my little secret that they're like, this is my little secret microwaving cocaine. I'm like, dude, like, like everyone knows this shit or not everyone, but I, I definitely know a lot of people who do it. <laughs> so and what's it do? I honestly forgot the reason why they do it. I think you put it on the plate. I think it just makes it easier to like cut up and like kind of more like pleasant to do. Like, I think it softens it up a little bit and ultimately like, right. Like, when you put something in microwave, it does like add more moisture into whatever you're microwaving. Mm, right. Yeah. So I imagine like that, that does like soften up the the cocaine. But it's like once you microwave it, like you probably want to do it, you know, like that same day. Yeah. Like once you put that moisture sure in it, like, yeah. yeah, it's probably probably gonna be fucked for. Dude, you know, I wonder much, much how much of that, that has to do with the additives and cocaine. You know what I mean? Like, because I mean, <laughs> it just feels a little bit like. When people smoke crack, like they got to heat that shit up. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, to answer your question, uh, with proper storage, ketamine can last about two to three years. So you're probably good on your ketamine supply for a while. It's, it's, Let's go. Like follow these, these rules. Keep it airtight, you know, away from light, et cetera. Ketamine for the win, bro. Dude, yeah, actually, man, but so, 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 something random I found out. Fuck, I, I wish I remember exactly what it was. But you know, sometimes you get ketamine, ketamine, and it's like very powdery, like it looks like a powder. Whereas sometimes you get into these little like crystals and these little shards. And and someone told me that apparently in like in the U.S., like all the ketamine they make comes out in like one of the ways, either the powdered or the crystal one. And then ketamine from Europe or wherever comes out in the other way. And I wish I remember what the exact breakdown was. This is something I need to look into, but I thought that was super interesting because, because I've been really curious about that. Cause like some batches of ketamine, if I look closely, like it's literally like tiny little crystals instead of just like a straight up like cocaine, like powder. But that's dude, I know what you're talking about. I, I, I need to do some research on that, but I am also super curious. I've always wondered like why they flake differently, if that makes sense. <laughs> but moving on to the next drug, this one I thought was super interesting. MDMA. Guess how long MDMA lasts. And I'll I mean, go ahead like, and throw it in the same category as crystal meth. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a straight up crystal. So I could see that if you don't have moisture, like that's almost like a, a rock in my head in a way. So I guess that lasting like four or five years. Dude, it doesn't even expire. Apparently, <laughs> apparently oh, it's like, I mean, it's susceptible. I'm sure to the same thing as like all the other yeah. drugs that we talked about, like with the heat and everything. But it's way more stable because of that crystal structure. Same with crystal meth. Mm. So it's like not a, it's like not very likely to go bad or lose potency. Like you could you could take it like four years after getting it, and it's still gonna hit the same apparently. Wow. So I thought that was pretty unique about about MDMA and crystal meth. Some. Some of the more destructive drugs on our bodies seem to last the longest, and that is not surprising to me at all. Ah, <laughs> uh, how unfortunate! Some of the most beneficial ones, like shrooms, yeah, the they go bad yeah. the earliest. Dude, it yeah. makes a lot of sense, though. Like, 
it's like eating McDonald's, bro. Like you've seen the videos of like the burgers and fries, like not going bad. And that shit fucking wrecks your body. Like that shit's so bad for you. Like obviously if you're doing fucking crystal meth or MDMA, that shit can't be good for you. Like you're literally putting something in your body that doesn't even go bad. Like wild, just something to consider the next time you take those drugs. But that's why, you know, we preach being very intentional with your drug usage here. 100%. And then the last one that I was saving for last. Um, well, I'm skipping over alcohol here. Everyone knows how like the shelf life of alcohol, it's like a legal drug and it it's literally written on the bottle. Like, you know, <laughs> um, and everyone knows about the ways you store it and the same, same rules apply with alcohol, with the light and everything. I just kind of how shit works. But my favorite one to talk about here, because it's the only one that I really have a deep personal story connected to is, is a weed, it's like cannabis. All right. So, you know, I did some research on this. And as you guys know, like weed comes in multiple different forms. So the shelf life for weed. So once again, just like all the other drugs, it's susceptible to the same thing. So if you store it airtight in a dark place, et cetera, then it's going to last longer than if you don't. Right. But uh, for the different forms of weed, this is pretty interesting. So dried weed, it has to be dried would last six to 12 months. Right. If stored properly. And then I say dried weed because if the weed's not dried, then it could get moldy a lot more quickly. So it's not going to last nearly right. as long. Uh, edibles would last three to six months if stored properly. And see, I was surprised by that too. I thought edibles would last longer than dried weed, but it makes sense because chances are that if it's something edible, then the product itself that you're going to eat is going to go bad before like the, the weed part, if that makes sense. Uh, I see. I see. So, yeah. And so then CBD oil lasts for one to two years. I thought it would last longer than that. But once again, we're talking about a natural substance. So it makes sense that yeah. it's going to go bad. Then hash and wax, 12 to 18 months. That checks out. Uh, it's more concentrated. Vapes, 6 to 12 months. And then topical marijuana, uh, one to two years. <laughs> so a little personal story um, here. <laughs> Back when I was a huge stoner uh, and I was low key a little bit too reliant on weed, I just was smoking every day. And one day I ran out of weed and uh, all my plugs were busy and uh, there was nothing I could do to get weed that day. And so I did what any stoner would do and I started scouring my whole area. <laughs> like there's everything around me, seeing if I could just find something to smoke. Wait, like, like inside your house or like your neighbors like in or like house, what? Bro. No, like in oh, my house. <laughs> and I had a couch in the garage at the time. And I found I was looking through the couch, like maybe I dropped something in the couch. This is oh this is some crackhead shit. I'm sorry, yeah, guys. Yeah. I'm not like this anymore, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and I found this nug of weed in the couch that was just like solidified. And it wasn't like like tucked into the couch it was just kind of like on top of it but in the corner so it was still like completely exposed to air and everything and that shit was like it was like a a stale chip like the, uh. like the, the nug of weed was like completely stale <laughs> and i'm gonna be honest bro i took that shit grinded it up and smoked it and it got <laughs> fucking hot <laughs> <laughs> that shit still worked you know uh and and you know i googled it like it's safe to like to smoke like old weed and, like it seemed like it was safe enough at the time but the after doing actual research uh apparently it's best to consume cannabis within three to six months and the biggest one of the biggest reasons is that uh the thc will diminish so mm. uh According to research conducted by the UN of all people, the United Nations, cannabis loses approximately 16% of THC after one year, 26% of THC after two years, 34% of THC after three years, and 41% of THC after four years. So honestly, that's pretty good in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> you can have yeah, some weed around for a while. No, definitely. Yeah, like 16% after one year is not that bad. Like... I, I, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, I thought it'd be way worse. So, yeah, not me too. Happy. But, you know, yeah, just the thing is, like, if you're going to smoke old weed like that, like, just make sure you check for mold because that's going to be like the biggest killer here. Like, yeah. I say killer loosely. I don't know if it'll kill you or not. It might. <laughs> um, but you don't want to be smoking mold. That would 
could be really bad for you. It sounds horrible. Wait, so if you had to guess how long that nug was down there, like in the corner of your couch, what would you give it? It was like ballpark. Three months, probably. Okay, okay. I'd I, say I maybe three months. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah, it was nice and crispy. It could be worse. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, man. But yeah. But yeah, man, that's, that's all I've got for you. I learned a lot while doing research for this video, and I thought it was pretty interesting. And I think the biggest takeaways here, just to wrap things up, is all drugs are not created equal <laughs> when it comes to your shelf life. The more natural shit is not going to last as long as the chemical shit. And pretty much all drugs are susceptible to heat, light, air, and moisture. Moisture, thank you. Yeah. Heat, light, yeah. air, and moisture. So if you're going to store your drugs, make sure to store them appropriately and don't freeze your ketamine. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, hell yeah. I mean, I mean, thank you for the research on that. Like, those are some really good, clear takeaways. And I think that's something that we can we can all learn from and make sure that we are safely and responsibly enjoying our substances for uh for a long time to come. Hell yeah. And that's today's pod. You've been listening to Modern Day Hippie. As you exit the portal, we have just one small ask of you. If you learned something new today, had a laugh or resurfaced a drug story of your own, we want to hear about it. Drop us a comment on YouTube and show us some love on your favorite podcasting platforms. Internet algorithms really dog on us because of the topics that we discuss, so your support goes even further here than you might think. We'll catch you next week.